Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on first impressions review of the Huawei Honor 4 Play. This is a budget, uh, lower tier, and locked smartphone that you can find for under $100. Uh, it's a GSM quad-band device, and specifications include a 5-inch IPS 720p panel. The rear features an 8-megapixel camera with LED flash and autofocus, and the front features a 2-megapixel sensor for taking selfies and video chatting with. It features the Snapdragon 410 processor, which is a quad-core chipset clocked at 1.2 GHz and it comes coupled with one gigabyte of DDR3 RAM. So again, one gig of RAM here in 2017 is uh, decidedly lower end, but it still runs decently for your regular utility apps as well as for some light web browsing and light gaming. It comes with a 2000 milliamp hour capacity battery, which sadly isn't user removable, but the SIM card slot is located behind the battery door. So taking a quick look at the design of the phone first, you can see the front here features a earpiece. Uh, below the display itself, there's access to physical controls for home, back, and menu, which are capacitive and backlit, but they're not on screen. The side here features access to a volume rocker and also an on-off switch. The placement here is very comfortable and easy to tap and access, whereas the bottom features access to a micro USB port for charging and the microphone. Uh, you can see there's a textured material that tries to simulate a leather on the back that gives the phone a little bit of texture and making it easier to hold and grip. There's also access to a mono speaker on the back for playing back your videos and using it for speakerphone mode. So taking a quick look at the software side of things, again it runs on a heavily skinned version of Android known as Emotion UI, which is found on all Huawei's own phones and also the Honor series of phones. It gives you some extra options and is very reminiscent of iOS in my opinion, which isn't a bad thing, especially if you're a first time smartphone user, it's a bit simplified and gives you access to things like the calculator. There's also a torch that you can quickly turn on and off that uses the LED flash on the back. Uh, pretty nice utility features that can be accessed just from this main screen that also gives you some quick notifications. So again, we can see that it runs on uh, you know, below Emotion UI on a version of Android that's 4.4.4, which is KitKat, and it can be upgraded, but you do have to uh, do that yourself, um, since in China, these updates aren't rolled out automatically. Since this version was originally released in China and in Asia, you can see there isn't any Play services uh, pre-installed, but uh, Huawei does give you some of their own proprietary app packages that you can use to download more programs if you want to. So you can see that the main screen here is pretty easy to use. Main uh, navigation through the regular uh, pages of apps is fairly swift and responsive. Again, the biggest difference between Emotion UI and regular uh, vanilla version of Android is that there isn't a consolidated app drawer on the bottom that you can tap on. Instead, these pages are unlimited and they will fill up as you download more and more programs, again reminiscent of iOS. The colors and the icons themselves are fairly stylish and they have rounded corners which I think matches the jubilant and youthful nature of the phone. There's time and date widgets and if I swipe here to the left it gives me a universal search bar. I can tap on that to search through my programs as well as through the, the uh, web very quickly. The drag down notification bar also gives me things for turning on and off Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, uh, volume, things like that uh, more easily. So let's take a quick look at the web browser first. Uh, the web browsing experience is fairly swift and responsive with a quad-core processor, although RAM is on the lower side of the spectrum, which means that if you open up tons of different windows or tons of apps in the background, it does get occasionally more sluggish. But as long as you are uh, fairly optimized in your web browsing, it still does a good job. You can load up the full versions of complex sites like Amazon and the New York Times, which are filled with many flash elements without too many issues. You can see that desktop sites load well. Pinch to zoom is fairly responsive. A very small detectable uh, slowdown, but, but for the most part, there aren't any checkerboard patterns and uh, elements can still be interacted with just fine on the screen. If we turn uh, pop on the virtual keyboard, you can see that's pretty comfortable to type on. It's very standard from Huawei, um, although with a 5-inch screen, it's definitely not as large as some of their 5.5-inch phones. So if you have slightly larger hands, that's something to consider. But all in all, it supports multiple languages, and the keyboard itself is fairly responsive and easy to use for messaging services and browsing the web and productivity tools. If we talk a little bit about the camera next, again, it's a megapixel sensor, which is respectable for a lower end smartphone and you can see the interface is pretty clean it's a little uh, it's not as updated as newer emotion UI phones but you do have still the same settings that you can program through uh, in terms of uh, object tracking, changing the resolution, ISO, adding filters, swapping to the front-facing camera, things like that, and even thing, a more advanced modes such as burst shots, watermark, as well as panoramic shots and HDR modes can also be accessed. There is an optical image stabilization, but uh, for the most part, images are quick to be captured. They're fairly, fairly swift, swift and responsive, and you can see that details are present, um, although you do need to have good lighting, otherwise uh, images are a little bit soft in their color.
Last but not least, we'll talk a little bit about the call quality of the phone. It does a respectable job. Again, it's a dual SIM phone, which means you can potentially pop in two SIM cards if you are traveling abroad, and it works pretty well. Reception was consistently within two to three bars here in Beijing, but the microphone is quite loud. Uh, the speakerphone also does a good job, even though it's located on the back, and it can get muffled if you're holding the phone you know, using the bottom of your hand. But for the most part, it works quite well. Um, and again, for these basic day-to-day -day tasks like utility programs and very light gaming, you should be fine with the performance on here. The Snapdragon 410 is a tried and tested processor that many folks use and you know, no real complaints or issues here. In terms of regular day-to-day -day use, it still remains pretty cool in terms of temperature. Uh, another feature of Emotion UI is that it automatically refreshes and changes the wallpapers as you use it to give you a more dynamic experience. That's why you see kind of the wallpapers start to shift here and there. Although sometimes that takes up a little bit of your resources and you know takes up a bit of RAM in the background. So anyways, that's been our hands-on review of the Huawei honor for play you can check out more details soon but for now this has been our video thanks for watching here at os reviews